lovely, lovely imps. I have been informed by other lovely, lovely imps that there is a, uh, a, a, a video essay of relative prominence that is criticizing so-called debate bros. Now, some of you may know, I used to, uh, I used to be something of a debate bro myself, although, you know, a little bit more of the feminine persuasion. I used to do a lot of debates. I don't do as many debates anymore for a number of reasons that I've discussed uh, in the full VOD that this video is gonna come from. Um, but, uh, but I've also been informed that, uh, that, that this one is pretty interesting and, uh, and I was interested in reacting to it because I have a lot of thoughts about debate. Having been a, a former, I wouldn't even say former, I still do do debates, I just don't do them as frequently. Um, but having been a frequent debater in the past, I have a lot of thoughts. And um, weirdly enough, I tend to disagree with a lot of the critiques that are leveled against debate bros and debate bro communities. Um, mostly because I feel like they're formulated incorrectly. So I'm usually interested in reacting to this sort of content. However, however, I have also been informed that there is a warning that I must heed in advance. So we are going to, apparently this warning is here in the, uh, in the description. And I'm gonna read this right here. <laughs> the description says, I think it's time we spoke about the debate bro genre. Hopefully we can do this without anyone getting needlessly upset, right? I guess we're gonna find out. Also, if you're Vosh, Hassan, Xanderhal, Destiny, or anyone else I spoke about who's notorious for streaming other people's content without permission, I do not give you my consent to show this video on your stream without asking in advance. I doubt it'll be shown, but I just wanted to throw that out there. My DMs are open on Twitter. You're welcome to ask. Um, now, you might not know this, but I'm a little bit of a rule breaker, a little bit of a rebel, a little bit of a revolutionary, you might say. And uh, as it turns out, things that are publicly uh, posted to YouTube and that you wish to provide commentary to as it has been publicly posted to YouTube is well within fair use. Now it is indeed possible that this Solari individual will attempt to launch some sort of uh, uh, you know, legal action against my channel or something like that, but interestingly would have absolutely no grounds to stand on. So I really, really hope that uh, that if I don't like this video, I am going to react to it, by the way, um, and I'm not going to ask permission. That is hilarious. Um, but, uh, uh, but, um, uh, if they if they are mad at my coverage, they might try to do something like that. And if they do that, well, I hope that you would understand how ridiculous that is. And I hope that you would also recognize that attempting to take down a very good faith and well-meaning trans content creator who used to be in the debate scene and has beefed with a lot of debate streamers and has a lot of critiques for debate, uh, the debate community might not be in your best interest. Also, no one ever reads YouTube descriptions, just so that you're aware. Uh, this is just a little YouTuber to YouTuber, you know, shop talk. No one ever reads that. I was already going to react to it, and then somebody told me that I needed to read the description. So I went and read the description. Uh, nobody reads them, okay? So uh, putting like a do not react to this in your description is like the equivalent, unironically, of those, um, of those channels that like like steal an entire song and then in the description they put this song was written by uh metallica uh it's it, you know uh fair use uh no no money is made from this no copyright uh infringement was intended that's like basically what you're doing um so you know now to be fair I was not mentioned, and I don't know if I'm mentioned in the video, and there's no way for me to know whether or not I'm mentioned without watching the video. So I don't know if I'm even in violation of this oddly constructed rule. But also, I don't respect rules. Rules are stupid, and rules are fun to break. So without any uh, further ado, let us react to the YouTuber Solari, who um, is who created this video about debate bros. Now, immediately, I do find it a little bit odd to call Hassan a debate bro, because to my knowledge, Hassan does a very, very, very small percentage of debate content. Um, but um, I get, I don't know. Maybe that's just clickbait. It could just be clickbait to bring in the Hassan viewers, okay? 
Yeah. Um. Um. Solari? No, not Celery. Celery is a different person. This is Solari. S-A. Here, I'm going to put it up on the screen so we know. Solari. Debate, bro. Um, video analysis. All right, so we're gonna do we're gonna do that. All right. So again, the channel is Solari, um, and obligatory statement. I say this every single stream without fail. Uh, but just so that we're clear, and just so that Solari knows that my community is not a community that is a an aggressive community in any way, shape, or form. In fact, we're a very very chill community. There is. There are two rules in my community. The first rule is do not die, but not that one doesn't matter. That's different. The second rule is imps always raid with love. So the only things that imps will ever do is raid with love. If they don't like something, you let it be. And that's a rule in my community. We're very, very stringent about that rule. We always have been. I've been saying this on my stream for two and a half years. My community knows imps only raid with love. So just in case, just wanted to make sure we got that out there. Anyway, let us watch this video. Solari's Debate Bros. Helping or Hurting? I need to turn this down just a tiny, tiny bit. So it's like a YouTube apology video. You start out with an animal to humanize yourself, to diffuse a potentially tense situation. Maybe that's what I'm doing here. No. All right, I want to get this out of the way before we do anything else, because this is often a problem when it comes to critiquing something, whether it's a movie, a show, a video game, or in this case, a personality, which as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, we're going to be talking about and indeed criticizing. Wait, isn't the famous apology video with a cat, isn't that like, um, isn't that Shane Dawson's cat apology video. I don't know if drawing a line to the Shane Dawson cat apology video is really the best move off the get-go. No, nothing. This is not a substantial critique, obviously, but, you know, like, that's kind of the one, right? Anyway, let's continue. Figures commonly known as debate bros, including Hassan Arby, Vosh, Xander Hall, and any other names that might crop up. One of the major problems that arises when discussing certain figures, whether they are on the left, right, or center of the political spectrum, is the parasocial attachments that their audiences can form with them, something we'll talk That's about in greater true. detail later on in the video. This often results in certain people oh, refusing. Um, Uncle Gumbald says, no Demon Mama shout out. Yes, um, it's very, it's interesting. Even when I did identify as a debate streamer, even when I was like open about that, I would put it as a hashtag in all of my videos and stuff like that because I did debate all the time. Um, I, I was never mentioned. And the same thing goes for Shark, by the way. Shark will also be forgotten. And um, I don't know if it's the case with this particular video. I hope it's not the case with this particular video, but for a lot of people, the reason why that's the case is because it's inconvenient for them. It's inconvenient for the narrative they're usually trying to sell. Usually, a lot of the de anti-debate bro videos are talking about how it's all cis white men, but, um, but, but Shark is black and I am not a man. And so our names are often forgotten, despite the fact that both of us have had pretty large presences in the debate scene. Also Merrick, yeah, like Merrick as well. You also never get brought up. Although, uh, yeah, I guess to be fair, I don't, I guess, I guess I never really think of your branding as a debate streamer, but that's, it is true. You do a lot of debates. So again, just another person. Um, yeah, De Merrick has done a ton of debates. I guess I just don't really, yeah. Zan is mentioned and Shark isn't. Yeah, it's very, very weird. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly, Gayfesh. That's exactly what I'm saying. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, let's continue. I just wanted to point that out. It is a little bit odd. It, it's kind of odd. Using to accept criticism of the figure that they're attached to and in some ways seeing it as an attack directed at them by association. You may be someone who clicked on this video with the intention of shooting me down before you've even finished hearing what I have to say. You no, may not even not be aware that you have that level of attachment, but 
If you find that what I have to say does anger you in some way or possibly compels you to personally attack me in the comments, I can't stop you, but I would like you to ask yourself what it is that upset you when at the end of the day, I'm not criticizing you as an individual or as someone who's part of a group. I do find, I mean, I guess I can't really get mad because I did do a little bit of couching of my own. Um, but most of my couching was responding to the do not react to this because I do not give you permission portion. Eh, whatever. To put it succinctly and in big words on the screen, critique of something that you enjoy is not a personal attack. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm painfully aware. Okay, but it can be. Like, for example, if I was to say that anybody who likes, if I was to say that people who like debate streamers, or no, sorry, if I said, if I said, uh, chicken sandwiches are enjoyed by pedophiles, that would indeed be attacking, so it, that's not entirely true. It, you know, it's not, it is, it's sometimes true that critiquing a thing doesn't necessarily mean critiquing a person, but it's not always true. Just so we're clear that this is exceedingly common when it comes to online discourse and to be real with you i'd rather not wake up tomorrow and find comments from people who are acting like i broke into their house on christmas day and pissed on all their presents i have look at the comments real quick comments i don't watch these guys and i can see where online debating can be pointless however i'm genuinely tired of an information imbalance that is consistent with discourse yesterday i watched a two-hour video essay meticulously breaking down horse shit that took Matt Walsh all of 10 minutes to dump on his live audience, turning them into a force that's choked children's clinics and entrenched anyone who doesn't care to look at the evidence. I don't have the answer and I wish I did, but we need faster reactions to bad reactors. Well, that's pretty, uh, that's a pretty solid response. Seems like a lot of people enjoy both types of content. So far, most of these comments seem pretty solid, right? At least the highest voted ones. All right. Let's go. Let's continue. Faith that you can handle this without getting angry, so have some faith in yourself too. Anyway, let's go. In the past few years, the debate bro has seen a massive rise in popularity. As you can guess, these tend to be young cis men who, for the most part, are white, that almost exclusively produce their content via streaming platforms such as Twitch. They also have successful YouTube channels with large amounts of subscribers and views where they post clips from their streams and, on the rare occasion, some content that's produced in advance, much like mine. With the rise in popularity of streaming and audiences growing desire for frequent fresh content, debate bros have sort of filled a lucrative gap in the market which was un I, I do find it very weird to call Hassan a debate bro. I really do, because the vast majority of Hassan's content is React. He very rarely does debates, that he's done them. And wait, also unironically, is Hassan considered white? Uh, people tend to consider Hassan white when it's convenient, and then consider him non-white when it's convenient. Um, and, and also, I'm pretty sure Hassan has said that, I think Hassan is literally one of the people who uses the term debate perverts. So I find this, something that I find interesting about videos that target debate bros is that a, a lot of times they do the same thing as videos that target bread tubers, which is that they just decide on a whim who is and who isn't a bread tuber. And I find that difficult to, difficult to accept, you know? Yeah. He does consider himself white? Okay. Fair enough. Also, yes, the idea that being a debate bro is lucrative is simply not true. There's been a, there's been two people who've made their living off of being a debate bro, and that's Destiny and Vosh, and that's about it. There's not really a whole lot of people in that category. It's not very lucrative, and in fact, Twitch politics is literally dead. Uh, just a, just a couple of little things coming from my experience with debate with debate uh, or with the debate community and debate streaming. Intentionally created by the inception of long form video essayists, when a particular genre explodes in popularity, an audience's thirst for it grows, and 
understandably with a format such as a video essay that needs to be researched, written, recorded and edited over a long period of time, it can be hard to satisfy an audience that consumes large amounts of content daily. It's the same reason Disney plans out a timeline for its Marvel movie releases and now produces TV show content between them. They understand and cultivate the need to consistently consume their products to avoid a loss in interest. Because of the supposed sparseness and inconsistency of leftist focused content on YouTube, streamers had the opportunity to capitalize on a growing interest in this field, where they were not only able to produce content without all the planning and work that goes into creating video essays, they were. Okay. Right away. Right away. I am going to take a, a small critique. I'm going to offer a small counter critique, which is that while uh, while the planning and work is different, the idea that streams take less work than a video essay or that they take less planning is absolutely absurd, okay? Um, I have, I can literally show you, hold on. I can show you, hold on, one second. Let me just see here real quick, hold on. Here you go, here you go, take a look at this. This is my folder of notes. Look at how I'm still scrolling. I have like, this is, and this is not all of my notes. These are just the notes that I've saved. I have so goddamn many, it's actually wild. And then I also have a folder of research files. This is 113 files, and those are only the ones that I've saved. The idea that you don't, that streamers don't prep or that streamers don't work is absurd. I, you guys know how much I stream. I stream at minimum, like these days, three five hour streams a week. That's 15 hours of live performance. That's more than some like theater actors will do. Yeah, so um, yeah, I have some pretty, like I, I, I really think that it's a fucking unfair thing. It's a, it's a, not unfair, not just unfair, it's unfair and it's uninformed to claim that like streamers don't have to do work. It is a different format. And yes, it is possible to get things wrong when you're reacting to things on the fly. God knows I have before. Usually I correct it pretty quickly, but it's just a different format. Uh, uh, Shiny Fruit Bat says, aside from on-stream research and off-stream prep, I imagine even do just doing a stream takes a lot of energy. Like, just from an outside perspective, it looks like a ton of work. It is a ton of work, okay? Every single stream after stream, I am exhausted. The reason why I take a day off in between every stream at least is because I am physically exhausted. From the moment I turn on stream, I'm checking chat. I'm checking two different chats at minimum, sometimes the Discord as well, and reacting to those in real time. And usually, most of my work days include adding things that I had not, that I did not know were going to be a part of stream when I started. So, for example, something happens while I'm streaming, somebody sends me something. It's just. There are times where streamers are able to get away with things that video essayists can't, but video essayists are also able to get away with some things that streamers can't. And I really don't think that this type of comparison is very helpful personally. Able to do so daily, serving as a voice for their audience, arguably becoming figureheads of a growing movement. Oh, and every time I hear this from video essay people, I just ask them, then why don't you, I just wanna ask them, well then just why don't you stream then? If it's, this is, oddly enough, this is the same shit I used to deal with when I was a writer. When I was a professional writer, people would be like, whoa, you write for a living? Wow, that must be the best job ever. And I would go, okay, then do it. Why aren't you writing then? If that's true. And also it was like the worst job ever. Being a writer literally destroyed my ability to enjoy writing. Being a professional writer literally destroyed my, my love for writing, at least for the last few years. Uh, if, it's, if, it, if it's so easy and so lucrative, then do it. But I get the feeling that maybe they're a little nervous to go live. Maybe they understand that actually keeping up with the chat is really, really difficult and, ex and takes a lot of energy. Anyway, let's continue.
Unlike pre-produced content, they could offer live commentary and insight on certain topics or events in the world as they are happening, all while interacting with an audience, which in turn can provide them with regular material to discuss, ensuring that streamers don't find themselves in a position where they're left without anything to talk about. They're this comes from, this is ignorance, by the way. This comes from ignorance of streaming. Saying that like chat is always there to save you, that is so not true. Do you know how, okay, there is a acute anxiety that I have every single stream day that I have not prepped enough content for you all. And any time that I find myself like not prepared, like when I do imp's choice and I let you guys know in advance, um, I'm a little more okay with that, but any time that I like I don't know what to do next It is the most anxious anxiety inducing thing you can imagine because as it turns out No, your chat will not just spontaneously provide you with content. It's just not how it goes Even when you have a lot of people watching Like it's just That's just not reliable and also you can't get people to show up if you don't know what to tell them to show up for Y you know? Yeah, so... Anyway, let's continue. Essentially the most interesting person at a party. They have charisma, a voice which can be heard over everyone else's. Everyone wants to hear what they have to say about everything and anything, and their insight is more valuable than anyone else in the room. Obviously, this is basically just how streaming works. You have the platform and the audience, but the unique selling point of streaming compared to something like YouTube is that there's greater emphasis and utilities for audience interaction, where the streamer is able to offer almost immediate feedback. Unless you're someone like me, since my connection dropped so many frames that you think my stream was a PowerPoint presentation. Kill issue. Shout out to Spectrum for their garbage, overpriced internet, and their pathetic 20 megabytes per second upload speeds. It's 2022. Come on. Because of this ability to interact with a streamer, it's much easier to form a bond with them. You type a message, they read it out, and respond. They're talking to you, recognizing you, and possibly validating you, which can feel especially meaningful when you're acknowledged among an audience of thousands of people. The majority of viewers on Twitch are very young. Children, teens, and people in their early adulthood. Um. I don't think this is backed up by evidence. Okay, on Twitch, actually? No, wait, no, wait. He said Twitch, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. When you're wait, acknowledged wait, wait, wait. among an audience of thousands of people. The majority of viewers on Twitch are very... Also, okay, two things going on here. He's talking about an audience of thousands of people. Right now, uh, just so you know, most streamers don't have audiences of thousands of people. That is only streamers who have well and truly, like, nailed it. I am considered a mid-sized streamer, and I get about 250 to 350 viewers right now, not thousands. Um, also, okay, they did say majority on Twitch. On Twitch, I do believe the majority is younger, but I don't think that's true for, uh... Oh, wait, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look. God damn it, I can't see that because... Ah, uh, it's locking me out. Hold on. Can we see this real quick? Oh, it's it's fucking locking me. Yeah, I can't see those stats, unfortunately. It won't let me. Maybe I could do it in a private window? Let's see. All right. Nah, I can't. It's locking me out. <laughs> Lame. Ads. Okay, let's continue though. Very young, children, teens, and people in their early adulthood. They also consume massive amounts of content from the platform, often daily for hours on end. While there's nothing necessarily wrong with this, it's becoming more evident over time that a lot of people have become prone to forming strong parasocial relationships with online personalities. There's a myriad of reasons. Wait, but that's true, but that predates streaming. I will agree that streaming is, uh, streaming is, uh, slightly more parasocial, like, or slightly higher at risk of parasociality than YouTube videos, but not that much. Parasociality was originally, uh, is, is a term that originally refers to 
people watching TV and movies and forming relationships with celebrities. Parasociality has been very strong for a long time. I will agree that streaming makes it slightly more risky, but like, but how much more? You think it's much more? Maybe. But also though, it, maybe it's much more, but at the same time, it's also just more social in general, right? Whatever. Let's continue. ...behind this, whether it's a lack of fulfillment in real-life relationships, the desire to be part of a community, loneliness, etc. Frankly, there's a lack of research behind this, and it's too early to say for certain, but if you'd like to learn more about this, I actually did do a video as well called Influencers Are Making You Miserable On Purpose. When you have a relationship with... On purpose, maybe. Also, by the way, if you are here, please click the like button below. Likewise, if you are not a subscriber to Demon Mama, press that uh, subscription button and ring the bell and it will make the demons of hell, including myself, very happy. That's right, you, by ringing the bell, can give a tribute to hell and it will make my power grow. And who doesn't want the, the, the one and only, the first demon type streamer to succeed? Press the like button, press the subscribe button, ring the bell. Continue. Someone, be it family, friend, romantic, or otherwise, you may have noticed that people have a tendency to adopt part of that person's mannerisms or even personality. Like, okay, guys, I understand that people think that streaming causes more parasociality, and I would agree that it does cause more, but the degree is how much. Keep in mind that, like, you guys know that there's like movies made about this, right? Like I know I know that most people on the internet are as according to this guy literal babies. Uh no, just kidding. He was he was saying they're very young. Um and haven't seen movies like The King of Comedy. The King of Comedy is a movie from wait, let me get the year correctly. Hold on. The King of Comedy is a movie from 1982 that basically could be about YouTubers. It's a movie about a, a, a completely parasocial relationship. And this was enough that it was like, it's, it's a movie that released in Hollywood is very well known. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, family channels on YouTube are crazy parasocial. There's a lot of it. Um, no other medium lets you put one of your messages up to the person making content here in real time. Wrong. Uh, music? Absolutely does. Uh, 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 celebrity culture absolutely does do that. There's tons of it. In fact, hell, like at Comic Con, they do panels where they specifically let people ask. Obviously, it's not to the same frequency, but, um, but it's also a different context. So, I don't know. Like, yeah, talk radio is another one. You can call into talk radio and you can be on the broadcast. In fact, that was a huge part of talk radio. Yeah, Misery is about a parasocial fan. Yeah, but I don't know. Streamer, especially a smaller one, feels more personal because they read your messages. Yeah, but a small streamer is more personal, isn't it? Like a little bit? Talk shows are the closest thing to streaming in that regard. Yeah. There's a lot, I think. Yeah, the talk radio is very similar to streamer post parasociality. Anyway, let's continue. This is, we're splitting hairs at this point and we're only six minutes into the video. I don't 100% agree with the critique, but I do think it's fair to say that um, that streams have a, a, a slightly higher risk of p parasociality. I just don't think that you can like, I don't think it's enough to like, be like, oh yeah, like streams are, this is the only reason why they're successful or whatever. How many people are here in chat right now? A lot, but then, doesn't this also apply to any type of social media? Like for example, um, how many people write messages to uh, to their Facebook favorite Facebook page or their Instagram influencers or TikTok or Twitter? It's not just streaming to be fair, but yeah, I, I just think it's, anyway, let's, let's continue. It's a completely natural thing. I've done it, you've done it. It happens without you even realizing. And it's only when someone points it out that you can notice. 
This can also occur with parasocial relationships. If there's a public figure that you admire and see regularly, there's a good chance that you'll start acting like them in some ways, whether that's an actor, singer, a fictional character, or indeed an influencer. The younger a person is, the more prone they are to doing this. They're still figuring themselves out, and if they're spending a bunch of time consuming the content of an extremely popular online personality who attracts huge audiences just to hear them speak, it's not surprising that they'd want to be like them. You may even have someone in your life who's suddenly started doing things like using phrases that the streamer says. It's not terrible, I guess it can be annoying, depending on the person that they're emulating, but there's something to this, and we'll get to that. Although if you do know anyone in your life that says stuff like PogChamp or Poggers unironically in actual conversations, uh, you need to set up an intervention for them immediately. has gone too far. This is also the case with people from the debate bro genre. Streamers such as Hassan Arbi, Vosh, Xander Hall, and others have a huge audience across all platforms and a tremendous amount of influence over them. Their format involves a heavy amount of audience interaction, discussing things such as current events, public figures, and- Yeah, I brought that up at the beginning, Sock Dunn left. It does make me, it, it the, the fact that this, argument hinges on Hassan being a debate bro, even though Hassan rarely does debates and also has repeatedly said that he hates debate bros. It's very weird. It's got the uh, anyone who I want is a part of bread tube type energy. And also, I, I think once again, we are seeing an example of someone overstating the the harm or the influence of Xander Hall. Yes, Xander Hall's channel is successful, but do we really see like is it really successful to the degree that you can compare it to Hassan or Vosh like Vosh is like 10 plus times Xander Hall's size it seems very weird to in to in include Xander Hall here but I don't know he does do debates well let's continue idea you think it's good yes I've said this many times I think people include Xander Hall just to um just to, just because they think he's easy to pick on. Eh, whatever. Let's continue. But overall, there's a heavy emphasis on left-leaning politics. Now, to make this clear and get it out of the way early, I don't think it's a bad thing that these streamers are promoting leftist ideology. I personally identify as a socialist, and if you've seen my other content, you'll know that I wear that on my sleeve and try to promote these ideas myself. One thing I do think that's extremely important though is the method in which ideology is promoted. Let me put it this way, I've had a few jobs in sales over the years and not to toot my own horn, but I was pretty good at it. It's a sleazy job and I never want to do it again, but you know. Well, 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 a fellow ex-salesperson. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta work to live. One of the most important things that I learned though is that everyone is different when it comes to being so Literally every ex-salesperson says that? Yeah, because uh, most, most salespeople who are ex- Okay, because if you used to be in sales, chances are you were probably all right at it, and chances are you got tired of the environment. Otherwise you stay in sales. Because sales makes- you can make so much money in sales, it's actually insane. The amount of money you can make in sales is absurd. It's just horrible. It sucks. Sold to. Some people like directness, some like it when you're personable, etc. In a way, ideas are much like products. If you want someone to buy into it, you have to sell it to them. You have to reassure them that they'll okay. benefit from it in some way and that they're making the right choice, all while allowing them to come to the conclusion on their own. As the saying goes, you're selling the sizzle, not the steak. Left-leaning debate bros have been beneficial. Social platforms have long been a battleground of ideas where people are steadfast in their beliefs, no one really listening to the other, and I believe that's largely because when you're just discussing these things with regular people online, it can be hard to convince them when you're an unknown quantity with no influence or notoriety. You're just a stranger with no face telling another faceless stranger that what they believe is wrong or flawed. Streamers, on the other hand, do have influence, massive amounts, hence why the term influencer has such a broad definition. 
They have an audience and they're there for a reason. As well, but influencer, the term influencer does not just refer to streamers though. In fact, I'm pretty sure that influencer arose initially as a way to describe Instagram posters and Twi and TikTok posters who neither of those uh neither of those platforms are known for being streaming centrals. Yeah, bloggers. So okay. Such they have more power when it comes to changing minds, especially when they're able to directly interact with them on a Yeah, yeah, also YouTubers platform like Twitch. The streamer Destiny, who most definitely couldn't be defined as a leftist, gained notoriety for his ability to deconstruct people's arguments and their beliefs in a way that was so effective that numerous people have proclaimed that it was his words that convinced them that they had flaws in their far-right ideologies and ultimately changed their mind. Similarly, Sam Cedar from the Majority Report gain some level of notoriety by inviting calls from libertarians and deftly dismantling their arguments, sometimes backing them into a corner where they end up saying Do you see, I feel like, I feel like we're play, playing a little fast and loose with some of the definitions here. Sam Cedar is an old school radio host and they do not react to their chat. They run a radio show and they sometimes take callers just like old school radio shows. But is, can you real? I don't think you can categorize Sam Cedar fairly as a debate bro. I do part. love Sam Cedar, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I would have never categorized him as a debate bro. Like they don't even interact with their chat at all. They're not even like, they technically stream, but only because they publish their radio show on the internet. Eh, whatever out loud and just sometimes crumbling into a pile of failure. Thank you for saying that, Sam. You're a horrible, despicable person. Thank you for having me on your show. Sam's great. He gets a pass. The internet. It's pretty great, right? We can do stuff like look at nice pictures, check out some memes, buy stuff you don't need while drunk at 3 a.m., see your uncle's questionable Facebook posts watch videos like this one, or watch content from streaming sites. Except when it turns out that the show that you wanted to watch on Netflix is now no longer available, and your only it's options are to either not watch it, hope that it comes back, it won't, Never. or use less savory means that might get you into Well, while they're doing their ad, I'm gonna do mine. If you're having fun, press like below and consider subscribing. My show is 100% free to the public, there is no cost to watch, and there never will be but if you want to support me, please subscribe on demonmama.com forward slash live. You can click the subscribe button. That's the way that I make my living. So please consider liking, subscribing on YouTube. And then if you really want to support me, subscribe on my website. Deeply, deeply appreciate that. I, uh, my show is funded by my viewers. Viewers like you. So press like and, and subscribe and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you got it, goddess trans girl. Exactly. Wow, this is a little bit of an ad. Sorry. Where's the hot tub streamer criticisms have taken us? Streamers are bad now because they stream big incel vibes. But for real, uh, streaming at all? Stream cell. Stream pilled. Well, I'm stream pilled. I love streaming. I find that so many people see the world purely in dichotomies. In this view, people who talk about politics are either video essays or debate bros, no shades of gray or otherwise. It's pretty lame and feels like when people pull out the only two genders bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can see where that would where you would come from with that. I think people just like uh, clean categories even if they don't actually align with reality. They will force people into categories because it makes it easier to have an argument or whatever. I think it's weak too. I think it's a weak argument. I think a lot of people do it unintentionally, but yeah. Oh my God. This is a hell of an ad.
Alright, we're hey back bros, to the video. Are changing people's minds isn't the problem. The less people investing in far-right ideology, the better. The issue comes with the kind of people debate bros are creating, and how they in turn go about changing minds. Although debate bros might be somewhat effective at changing people's minds thanks to their influence paired with the way that they use their words, as I mentioned a moment ago, the average person doesn't have much power unless they're truly gifted. One thing I've noticed over the past few years is the higher frequency of people on the internet and sometimes real life who approach political discussion in a way that's not productive, to put it kindly. It's a kind of- Okay. Okay. I have to- I have to disagree with this. I have been involved in political arguments my entire life, okay? Since I was a kid. When I- back when I was a Christian, I was taught to- uh, to preach. I was taught to argue politically. No one has ever been good at political debate ever. People have always been bad. It's literally a joke that you, you all have heard this. You, the things you never bring up with a good friend is uh, religion or politics. Never bring up religion or politics. It's considered rude to bring up religion or politics at a dinner because everyone gets triggered about that shit. All right, let's continue. I just, I just think, I, I think pinning people being bad at political arguments on debate streamers is a hell of a stretch. A person will go on subreddits or Discord servers containing groups who are ideologically opposed to them with the intention of being antagonistic by speaking down to people, patronizing them, being dismissive, throwing insults, and just being caustic. Their beliefs might be for the overall benefit of society, but the intention of this approach isn't necessarily to convince others, it's to come across as intellectually superior to them, putting across the message that people who don't align with them are inherently dumb and therefore deserving of derision. While there are plenty of people out there who are- Okay, but essay, video essays do this too, constantly. This is not unique to debate bro format. So, I mean, okay. But this, all, all of these, I, I, I can agree with these, but all of these apply to pre-existing, pre-debate streaming content. I mean, do you guys think that Bill Maher, do you think that Fox News, do you think CNN is there to, like, make a good argument? Or do you think they're there to humiliate the opposition? Like, this is just how it goes. Like, that's all interactions a lot of people when in, this is like all of the spectacle tv movies this happens all over the place yeah willingly ignorant when it comes to discussing politics beliefs are formed through a variety of deep and complex ways they're interwoven with your socialization and environment and i personally don't believe that it's right nor fair to accuse someone of being stupid just because they don't share your beliefs. Debate bros are infamously antagonistic towards those who don't align with their belief system. They may not be- Again, so is, ev so is every talking head? Radio do you think, do you think that like, I don't know, again, this predates, like, do you think that like, uh, do you think that like liberal debaters are like any better about this? Like radio debaters? No, this is like a problem. This is a problem with any like personality based system. I don't, I don't get how this is unique to debate bros at all. Like what, what makes this unique to debate bros or debate bros since we're including Hassan and Sam Cedar? be heading into online spaces to antagonize strangers, but their overall approach to dealing with those who don't agree with them closely mirrors that of those that do, and I think it's safe to say that's not a coincidence. If, for example, you watch Vosh's stream, you'll notice there's sort of a theme in the behavior of the audience and Vosh himself. The majority of viewers are people who watch regularly, and therefore they agree with Vosh, something which is to be expected. They ask him questions about various political issues, sometimes public figures, and in general there's a consensus on these things. Vosh and other debate bros though have sold themselves on the premise of being leftists who don't get bogged down with the left's supposed demand for niceties and politeness. They tell it like- 
a lot of but a lot of content but chapo had that as well and they're not debate streamers in fact chapo was chapo is the the they are a podcast a pre-recorded podcast they have a video game stream but not but only one of the actual like core chapo guys is on the video game stream and that's relatively that's new and has way less viewers than their actual thing and chapo was the first dirtbag leftist who didn't care about niceties and politeness again this is not unique to debate bros not even close in fact a lot of the anti-debate bro people also engage in this and also yeah hassan doesn't fit this at all this is so strange thank you very much uh james mitchell thank you so much for the five dollars deeply appreciate your support thank you very much truly literally just go on twitter so many lefties are irony poisoned assholes yeah like literally chapo's enormous audience none of whom well okay i wouldn't say none of whom but a very very small percentage of whom are debate streamers are notorious for this you think bernie bros were all just fans of debate streamers all right come on this is like it is so they don't want to be held down by wokeness or the need to maintain a squeaky clean public image they represent that anger that we all feel about the status quo, about the wealthy and the powerful who control our lives with the invisible hand of capitalism, and our skepticism towards leadership. It's perfectly fine to be angry at these things, I know I am, but I also don't believe anger should be a brand, because communicating via anger is extremely dependent on the situation, and when you have debate bros convincing people that anger should be their go-to when attempting to convince others that they're right, I don't think it's as productive as people think, and can ultimately do more damage than good. Just look back at the 2000s and the early 2010s when edgy internet atheism you, was all Lyra. the rage. The Chase Lyra says, uh, part of why I love Demon Mama is she has a much more positive and wholesome relationship with her chat. Well, I try to. Sometimes I get mad at chat, but most of the time I'm pretty chill. Um, I, I think this is very, I don't think this is really saying much here. But let's continue and let's hear let's hear them out. Okay. There was no shortage of creators on YouTube who made careers out of pointing out the ridiculousness of religion, that it existed only for those who were incapable of understanding and accepting science and logic. These were the people who inspired others to behave in similar ways, posting screeds about how they feel enlightened, living their lives knowing there's no God, creating memes for other atheists to enjoy, and going out of their way to belittle those who don't agree with them. The movement undoubtedly inspired some people to change their beliefs, but when you look back on it now, it's just embarrassing. And I'm sure that a lot of people who participated in it are embarrassed about how they acted now. Sure, going into Barnes and Noble and put- okay, But that's true about literally everything. You're telling me there aren't a bunch of goths who are- or, and scene kids who are embarrassed about how they acted? That's just true about everything. Every single thing. Do you think there's- do you think there's not hippies who are embarrassed about the way they behaved when they were young hippies? That's like a genre of boomer is like the former hippie turned cranky conservative. That's like, I don't know, like again, not unique to debate bros, not even a little. Putting some copies of the Bible and the Quran into the fiction section was the funniest shit in the world when you were 14 years old, but as an adult with car payments, taxes, back pains, a favorite laundry detergent, and a curfew on drinking coffee after 6 p.m. on weeknights, it's really tough to look back on that version of yourself and convince yourself it was just immaturity and you weren't just being an arsehole. Some people might even look back at themselves and ask, why was it so important that I let people know how much smarter I am than them? That I figured something out that even my parents couldn't, yet they insisted it was true. But that's kind of a part of being a teenager, wanting to feel like you have some importance, that you have answers to difficult questions and Therefore, what you have to offer the world is valuable, which is often why disaffected teenagers turn to strangers on the internet for validation, because they can do so without having to reveal their age or experience. I look at what's happening with the left right now, and I can't help but recognize a similar pattern. I mean, that's true. I would say the, the, the internet has been a force multiplier, but that again that does not that does not uniquely apply apply to debate bros are you kidding me forums are where this stuff started 
Like, I, I just, I don't see how this applies to debate bros. And um, while I can say that I'm happy that so many people are latching onto leftist ideas, I'm not particularly happy with how much of a striking resemblance it bears to that era of the edgy internet atheist. I really care about this stuff. A lot of people do. It's important. And I really don't want people to get older and reflect upon the time that they were an edgy leftist in their teenage years. They will always do that. That will happen to everything. And everyone, everything you love will become cringe. You must, you must embrace the cringe. To live is to cringe. Everyone is cringe when they're younger. Everyone is cringe throughout their entire life. Everybody has cringe. Okay? Yes. Are there some who are particularly bad? Yes, there are. But, um, so far, this entire video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, so far, we're 18 minutes in and most of this video has just been ageism. Unironically. Like, I, <laughs> I know that most people kind of find ageism funny sometimes, and I agree that most of the time when people talk about ageism, they're being stupid about it. But unironically, this is just a video making fun of kids at the moment. So, um, not debate bros. Exactly, exactly. Do not kill the part of you that is cringe. Kill the part that is, that cringes. True, fucking true though. Let's go. Is ...and diminish the value in a message that they were trying to spread in unproductive ways. I want people to keep caring until the day they die, but I also want them to understand the ways in which this ideology is being promoted through debate bros isn't always helpful. I'm really glad that they're lighting- Okay, well that's true, but then don't you kind of have to- shouldn't your video explain the ways in which the debate bros aren't helpful? Because so far all you've described is teenagers being cringe. You haven't described anything so far that's unique to debate bros. I mean, we still have quite a bit of time left to go, but so far. This fire in people, but it's not helpful when the same fire is used in an attempt to burn other people down rather than help them light their fires. Look, if you like these people, I'm not going to tell you not to, or that you're wrong in doing so. I'm sure that plenty of you are able to recognize the problems with the bait bros, but watch them for the sake of entertainment or just keeping up with what's happening in the world. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying that you're so malleable that your entire personality is just being rewired just by watching them. But like I said, some people do internalize this stuff. What I want you to consider though is how streamers like Hassan, Vosh, Xander Hall, etc. serve as figureheads and represent you and your ideology. Hmm. I feel like I feel like there was a failure to connect those two. Let me listen to that back again real quick. This was a, this was a, a long sentence. Okay. So let's let's listen to this again. These people, I'm not going to tell you not to or that you're wrong in doing so. I'm sure that plenty of you are able to recognize the problems with the bait bros, but watch them for the sake of entertainment or just keeping up with what's happening in the world. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying that you're so malleable that your entire personality is just being rewired just by watching them. But like I said, some people do internalize this stuff. What I want you to consider though. Okay, but some people, inter a lot of people also internalize vid smug video essays. Ben Shapiro is not a streamer. Ben Shapiro runs a asynchronous TV show that doesn't even take callers, doesn't have any live, like any live aspect whatsoever. Ben Shapiro has and always had, well, besides when he goes to college campuses, but the bulk of Ben Shapiro's content is, is, is pre-recorded. And yet nonetheless, he has a huge influence. So how is this anything that's unique to debate bros? I just, I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm missing something. All right, let's continue. Is how streamers like Hassan, Bosch, Xander Hall, etc. serve as figureheads and represent you and your ideology. Whether you like it or not, these streamers do serve as a kind of standard bearer, especially to those on the outside looking in. They're the ones that people look at when intrigued about what we have to offer and- 
Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait, we have to do something real quick. We really have to do something real quick, okay? Hold on. We got to do a little fact check here, all right? Okay, hey, hold on, hold on. Okay. Here we go. We're just going to look at three channels real quick, okay? Here we go. Vosh. Here is Vosh. As you can see, Vosh has... 407,000 subscribers, okay? So that's a lot of subscribers, all right? He's got 407,000 subscribers. Vosh is probably, I think, the biggest debate bro. I really don't think it's fair to call Hassan a debate bro. I think that's very inaccurate. I will hold by that, especially as this has gone on. But Vosh is about the biggest debate bro there is with 407 subscribers on YouTube. H Bomber Guy has 100.5 million subscribers. 105 million, more than double Vosh. ContraPoints, 1.61 million subscribers. And, uh, and also ContraPoints is currently going to be in like a documentary by Hillary Clinton. Can we, what's another one? Sean and Jen? Or Sean now is not Sean. I, I can't believe I called it Sean and Jen. Sean. Sean is at 578,000. So the closest to Vosh. And Sean is about the, is a very dry channel. So, um, no offense to Sean. I love Sean's videos. So the idea that like Vosh is the first instinct that people are going to come to when they come into these spaces. Yeah, philosophy. Yeah, wait, philosophy tube. Let's do philosophy tube. Philosophy tube on YouTube. Philosophy tube has 1.21 million. Triple Vosh's subscribers. So... I don't think this is a fair comparison at all. Saying that debate bros, like, this just sounds mathematically incorrect. These, all these content creators have been around for a very long time, and they are much more well-known. Like, objectively more well-known. So, I don't know about that. Yeah, Big Joel is bigger than Vosh. Yeah, basically every, all of the famous video essayists are significantly larger than Vosh. I just, I don't know about this, guys. I don't know about this, everyone. How willing we are to include and educate people with differing perspectives. You may argue that we don't have representatives, but sorry, that simply isn't true. It's just how it is now. Political ideology has long been a form of brand and figures on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and elsewhere reinforce that. And it's just how it is now. Political ideology has long been a form of brand, and figures on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and elsewhere reinforce that. And before anyone says it, but that's but but that's true. That's true. Way before debate streamers, maybe. I mean, that is true. Like for example, Fox News is is branded around republicanism. Yes, I'm guilty of reinforcing that too. And I'm not happy about it, but that's something I might talk about in a future video. Let's just say we should have paid more attention to Mark Fisher. Since we're in this position though, and there's seemingly no going back, I would like it so that the people who do represent my ideology do so in a way that's not only inclusive, but palatable for the general public. The ones who aren't already on our side, or sitting on the fence. As things stand, I don't think that's the case, and while fingers can be pointed at numerous people for this, the notoriety and influence of debate bros worries me the most. As Their sign every debate bro that you've mentioned is significantly smaller than any of the video essay essays that we looked at except for Sean. All of them.
all of the debate bros. In fact, if you combined the debate bros that you've mentioned, none of them would have the platform reach of a ContraPoints or an Abigail. Like, I, I don't know where this is, I don't know where this argument is based off of. As I already mentioned, they have a brand of being edgy. They're known to- Except for vibes. This, there is vibes. Is this a capitalism realism point or a vampire castle? Probably vampire castle based on context. Let's continue. Let others. others, the notoriety and influence of debate bros worries me the most. As I already mentioned, they have a brand of being edgy. They're known to yell at others, speak down to them, and sometimes be insulting. Something which you can imagine isn't conducive to winning over people. That is the, that is right there, the most weasel word thing I have ever seen. No, they, wait, hold on a second. There's so much wrong with this. First of all, Stating that they're known for is like, okay, what are you fucking talking about? Secondly, they're not known for that within their fans, which are apparently large in number. Their fans don't agree with you. <sighs> this guy is like, what is he talking? He's just anti-streamer. Also, Hassan isn't a debate streamer and he's still condescending. Also, video essayists are also condescending. This is just not, this is a nonsense argument. This is useless. Who don't agree with you. I mean, when was the last time someone won an argument by repeatedly calling the other person stupid? They're brash. Some like Vosh and Zanderhall even go as far as casually using ableist language and complaining about woke scolds who protest this. A derogatory term used for people. Ah, okay, so this is now the third or fourth time that um that this guy has done the DJ Mule thing. Uh Solari has shown images of the debate bros he's talking about without actually showing clips of them. Now, I happen to know for a fact that he is correct about this point, but why wouldn't you show one of the many clips of them saying the slurs if you wanted to make that case? Why be so slippery? I do agree that Vosh is very 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 uh let's say cavalier with his use of certain ableist language. Something that I don't really agree with. Uh, obviously, you guys know I don't do that. Uh, I don't think it's a be all end all, uh, obviously, as I've discussed this many, many times on my channel, my views on this, but okay. People who are supposedly being overly sensitive and in some cases, allegedly holding back progress. They project this idea that diplomacy has become an inconvenience at a time where the world is teetering on the brink of destruction, a sentiment which I understand but don't necessarily agree with, especially when the left is often criticized for its lack of tact when sharing ideas with others, which is more- Wait, wait, the left is known of a lack of- Wait, 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 hold on. This is a huge flaw in his argument. Hold on a second. This is a huge flaw in this guy's argument. The left is known for a lack of tact because of video essayists, because of le Twitter leftists. Debate bros are comparatively fresh to the scene. The left's lack of tact is these guys' fault. These are the what? these guys, essayists, video essayists like this guy are the ones who've been doing the lack of tact thing. And also, no debate streamer doesn't believe in diplomacy. They just go hard on certain types of people. What? Often than not, used as a tool by conservatives to dismiss what people actually have to say, suggesting that a lack of civility undermines genuine critique, which is honestly bullshit, but nevertheless, it happens. The whole thing is part of their personality, though, cutting through the chaff and getting to the point while being painfully blunt. In a way, I can't blame them. Like I said earlier, ideas have to be sold to people, and if you get bogged down with the details, then it can be easy to lose interest. Plenty of, pl plenty of debate streamers do go into the details. They just do it in a debate format and not in a video format. Also, this guy is not getting bogged down with the details very clearly. In fact, he skipped over and made definitively false claims about the viewership numbers. 
Merrick says, these are the people who still sh shill the fake Lenin quote about we'll just call Kotsky a class traitor and create an environment of shitting on and canceling anyone who disagrees with them. Well, I don't know if this guy's done that, but I mean, certainly this video seems to add to that trend. Um, and yeah, that, that quote is embarrassing. Anyway. But their audience is largely on their side already, so there's plenty of room for exploration and education. I know I don't get too deep into theory, but to be frank, I'm lacking the time, resources, and energy. By being media personalities and having parasocial links with their audience, there's also an unfortunate tendency for people to excuse their words and actions, and sometimes go as far as viciously def- That is very true about video essayists as well. Have we not forgotten how much excuses are made for video essayists of every stripe? including ones that he's shown in this video. In fact, literally one of his arguments before was about TJ Kirk, the amazing atheist, who is a streamer now, but many years ago was a YouTuber, a pre-recorded YouTuber. Defending them, often by saying that because they've done some good, that automatically overrides anything bad that they may do. That because they have this ability to intellectually dominate detractors, their less favorable opinions should be brushed off. Some will even go as far as- I do agree people do this, but they do this for all of it. Hero worship is a hell of a fucking drug. But this is hardly- I mean, guys, have you seen how hard music fans will stand for their favorite artist? Did you guys see- have you guys seen that shit? Like, have you guys seen, like, uh, like, Nicki Minaj? Like, Nicki Minaj will literally sick her fans on people. They have a name for- for Nicki Minaj fans. I can't even remember what it's called. Off the top of my head, there's, like, a name for extreme fans. The Barbs. The Barbs. They call themselves the Barbs. Yeah, so like, this is not, again, this has, this is nothing unique to, uh, Debate Bros. This entire video has been nothing unique to Debate Bros. No case has been made against Debate Bros so far. Reinterpreting what they said in lengthy Reddit posts, performing mental gymnastics so complex that it would make a Cold War era Russian Olympian green with envy. I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your time and energy, but Maybe, just maybe you should take into consideration what else you can invest it in before spending a huge chunk of your day defending stuff like this. In fact, and this is going to be a real hot take, I have yet to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child <coughs> should be illegal. Do they need to be defended? This is an interesting one, okay? I find this very interesting because what, it's a Kafka trap, or maybe that's not the right word. It is a type of trap though, which is if you, def if you say, wait a minute, you're using that clip dishonestly, then this guy here, this guy will say, oh, look at you. You're doing exactly what I said. You're defending the debate, bro. You can't you just take criticism? And that's if you point out the fact that that, that is literally a edited clip that is, that is completely out of context from a larger conversation in which the streamer explicitly makes an argument that, that he believes is a good argument against this. And the point of the conversation, obviously, is relevant in the context. And I mean that. This is a miss, like, using this clip is dishonest. Yeah, catch-22. It's a catch-22. If you say, wait a minute, that's a dishonest use of that clip, which it is. It is a dishonest use of that clip. Then you go, oh, look, you're just the trigger debate, bro. But you guys all know. See, you guys being my viewers, you know, first of all, that I'm like known for being critical of Vosh for whatever reason, because, well, because people are weird on the internet in general. But you guys know that I'm critical of Vosh, but also that I can point out when somebody's lying, which is exactly what's happening here. Did I use Kafka trap correctly? Let me see, is, this, is that the right term? 
A Kafka trap. Yes, yes, yes. I did use it correctly. Here you go. Kafka trap. Uh, uh, a Kafka trap. A sophist a, a suf a sophistical real rhetorical device in which any denial by an accused person serves as evidence of their guilt. Jill said Jack was paranoid, and when he told her he was not, she just nodded knowingly. It was a perfect Kafka trap. Yeah, this is a Kafka trap. It's saying, oh, I'm going to lie, I'm going to misrepresent a clip, and then if you oppose it, you're proving me right about, uh, 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 proving me right. Also, yes, Nut says Vosh literally misunderstood Demon Mama from the jump. That discourse was pure cancer. Yes, it was. It was fucking stupid. But whatever. It's water under the bridge now. The past is the past. And whatever. So anyway, for those who are wondering, just because, you know, now that I've, I'm going to step right into the Kafka trap because I don't give a shit and I've already illustrated it to you. The reason why that clip is not uh is not the the silver bullet that these people act like it is is because the point that Vosh was making is that he thinks that people do a very bad job arguing against CP not that 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 it isn't that it isn't bad just that people are bad at arguing at it and he's correct by the way because usually what people do is when they're confronted with it they will simply say that's disgusting fuck you which Valid. That's totally valid. And I get it. Obviously. However, that's not a good argument. And there are fucking weirdos out there who will make horrific predatory arguments and they will gamble on the fact that people won't be able to make arguments against them. So what what Vosh was saying is that he 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 never hears people make good arguments because all they do is respond with disgust. That part is always cut out. And instead, they make it sound like he's in favor of child porn, which is fucking ridiculous. Obviously, he's not. Does that make sense? Did, does everybody understand what, what, what went on there? Did I make sense to everyone? Tell me, chat, if I didn't make any sense, okay? Thank goodness. Let's continue. Defended. No, they're perfectly capable of defending themselves without much risk of losing their audience or income. Do they deserve to be defended? No, not in the slightest. If you say or do something bad, you should take ownership of it and pledge to do better, which is yet another problem. Deba That's if you're presenting the accusation correctly. People do not have to apologize for you lying about them. See, this is, again, this is the, where it gets really manipulative. If you, if you lie about somebody, they're not wrong for, for not apologizing for your lie. I, I do agree. That is, uh, Socked on Left says, I really dislike this argument for Debate Bros bad, because if Bosch is doing harm somehow, it's got to be represented with current content, which is like a thousand times more viewed than the streams these supposedly bad clips come from. Interesting. So far, no argument, no meaningful argument has been, uh, has been presented as to why Debate Bros are bad. All that's been said is things that are uh, well, there's been a couple of false claims about numbers, which I think are demonstrably false, by the way. The, the audience of, of video essayists is bigger than the audience of debate bro streamers. Just, it just is. Even if you include Hassan, Hassan being the biggest leftist streamer, but not the biggest leftist content creator in general. Uh, and then, so yeah, there's been nothing, nothing unique to debate bros and there's also been a number of factual errors. So far, not feeling too hot about this video. We still got another 20 minutes to go though. Debate bro streamers are arguably incapable of accepting criticism from other people. This just is the kind of thing that happens when people become big names. If you have a legion of people telling you that you're right all the time and are willing to defend- Streamers get a lot more view hours than non-streamers. Okay, all right, well, but- all right, let's see. That's probably true. 
but that's that that then it becomes very difficult to then it becomes very difficult to categorize oh look there's a vosh bubble i wish i would appear on one of these bubbles wow maybe someday i will be a bubble that's in here Yeah, I will appear on here at some point. Interesting. Okay, yes. If you're if you're measuring pure, if you're measuring pure watch hours, obviously that's true. But I I don't know. That's that's really I have to think about this. Perhaps in that metric, it's true. But then also, but then you have to consider, but then you have to consider. That's hard. I think that's really hard to draw that line because what, okay. So if, if 1 million people watch an hour and a half ContraPoints video, but 400,000 people, hmm. I think the obvious counter is that streamer content has a lot more fluff. It's less dense arguments, less well presented, and so on. So it's probably less persuasive per hour. But persuasion per hour, that's like, you may as well be arguing like fairies, fairies, or angels' wings per, el per bell ring, right? Like, like, persuasive per hour is an impossible thing to measure. How would you ever measure that? I think this is an apples to oranges thing. But I do, I will agree that a case could be made. I think a case could be made for view, for like view time, but I think that it's a weak case. I think that for the claims that are being made in this video, uh, there would need to be a lot more evidence than just view hours. Yeah, D rads per hour. Yeah, I got a rate of a 3.3.56 uh, D rads per minute. Everybody's just coming into here and getting de-radicalized. What can I say? I'm a bit of a smoke in a gun. I'm a bit of a loose cannon. My DRAD rates all over the place. Once I get going, though, it skyrockets. Well, all right, let's continue this. Venue to the hilt. It's not surprising that you develop a distaste towards criticism. Being wrong sucks. We all know that. In fact, here's a little bit of neuroscience for you. The anterior insula and the anterior cingular cortex are the parts of the brain which activate when experiencing physical pain. They also get activated when experiencing emotional pain, i.e. being wrong. I just found that cool to be honest with you and I wanted to share it, but regardless, it doesn't excuse someone from refusing legitimate criticism. Not only does it reflect poorly on them, it once again okay. is influencing behavior in more impressionable minds, and influences shouldn't be infallible. If you want to get some idea about how stubborn debate bros can be when it comes to accepting criticism, I recommend you check out JXE's video about his running with Hassan. Hold on a second, everybody. You want to get an idea about how stubborn debate bros can be when it comes to accepting criticism, all right? Debate bros can be when it comes to accepting criticism. Hold on, everybody. We're going to do a quick reality check. <clears throat> everybody knows how fragile debate bros can be when it comes to accepting criticism. Also, if you're Vosh, Hassan, Xanderhal, Destiny, or anyone else I spoke about who's notorious for streaming other people's content without permission, I do not give you my consent to show this video on your stream without asking in advance. I doubt it'll be shown, but I just want to throw that out there. Hmm. 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 And also, again, I strongly contest the idea that Hassan is a debate bro. I recommend you check out JXE's video about his running with Hassan. Also, I thought JXE is she, her pronouns. Am I wrong about that? He, she, they. 
Oh, okay. Oh, she, they, he. Okay, I guess, I guess it's all. Okay. All right. She, they, he. All right. Oh my god, yes, I remember that. Oh my god. Danny says, remember when Demon Mama did a whole last 16 hour stream, most of which was getting bad faith critique from people like Sansoy, saying she needs to be more quiet? Full on good faith attempt to learn, but I guess debate bros just don't want to take critique. Yeah, it's kind of weird. That was an interesting stream. Yeah, it was the last one that I've done like that. I've done multiple, actually. I've done two uh, two feedback streams and one stream where I go and I debate and I debate myself on my own content. I don't know. Uh, first of all, also, this is about reaction content. JXE's video on Hassan is about reaction content. It's not about debate content. And yes, I agree. Hassan handled that very poorly as I said at the time, but whatever, let's continue. Essentially stealing views from his video. To give you a shortened version, Hassan watched one of Jay's videos on stream without prior consent or credit, and when Jay called him out for it, Hassan didn't handle it particularly well, claiming that he gave him a fat bump in views, which wasn't true, then pledged to never show Jay's videos on stream again, completely missing the point. It's worth a watch, and Jay's good people. The link's below. Reacting to content has become the bread and butter of a lot of streamers, and debate bros are no exception. They'll open up a YouTube video, occasionally say something about it, maybe let out a- Me? So now, it's about React streamers? A light snort out of their nose to show that they're amused, maybe respond to what the audience- Not me, I'm a fucking pause Andrea. I fucking pause every two seconds. Me reacting to shit takes forever because I always have shit to say. ...is saying, or they might just leave it playing to an empty chair while they go heat up a frozen ready meal or take a dump. Cannibalizing content is nothing new, but when you have a huge platform with thousands of people watching. Also, wait a second, the first, wait a minute, hold on a minute, wait. The first React drama came from literal React YouTube videos. React YouTube videos are the original React content. What are you talking about? What is this guy talking about? the very least that you can do is tell people to check out a channel if they liked what they saw. You don't have to endorse them. Obviously, there's some issues attached to that. But the fact is, showing someone's content on a stream isn't the boost that people think it is. As JXE points out, it's a couple oh. hundred extra views, which is essentially nothing. It's such a fucking dingus, dude. Let's just show their, their channel name, dumbass! How is that so fucking hard? Like, what is this attitude that you have? This is a whole issue unto itself that I may get into someday, but for now, I'll put the links to a few videos that I like on the subject down below. Welcome to the Boost Bus, the section in each video where I take a moment to promote small content creators from various backgrounds and disciplines who could do with a bit more attention. James Mitchell was a nine dollars. Thank you very much. Nobody has time for this guy. Remember, 2015, every neocon and fascist would literally make fun of pearl clutching suckers, too afraid to debate, and that stereotype pushed many people to the right. I agree. Also, um, okay. Also, I'm just gonna call it out for what it is. This is massive virtue signaling. Being like. Part of the problem I have with debate bro streamers, debate bro streamers, which I define as anybody I don't like, is that they don't give credit to smaller streamers. Also, by the way, let me put in a segment where I give lots of attention to small streamers. Ah, it's whatever. This is just virtue signaling. What the fuck? This ever. time let's I see like who the, show you the world. But hey, let's see who's let's see who's recommended. All right, let's see who's let's see who's recommended. Of Lona Karaman, A.K.A. Harman. 
Harman works as a professional artist, taking on all types of work, including creating book covers, but their passion is painting characters from Dungeons and Dragons and World of Warcraft, which comfortably stand side by side with other great artists in the fantasy genre. As you can see, her work is wonderfully vibrant, filled with personality, and makes amazing use of lighting and colour schemes. Each character she paints is vastly distinct from one another, and contains a genuine love for their video game and tabletop inspirations. Harman is also open to commission and does bust sketches for all of her higher tier patrons on Patreon each month. So if you'd like some bespoke art from her, then sure. check out her links below, including her art station page, where you can see a wide selection of her incredible artwork. Be I sure to also follow her on deeply. her socials, and if you can, offer some financial support. If you'd like a ride on the boost bus in the future, then please send me one email to solarivideo at... No, no, okay, people who are saying that, uh... <laughs> saying, saying that it's a bad faith critique... No, come on. If somebody was like, if somebody did a video where it was like, these fake Christians never pray like they should. And then they went, anyway, let us join our hands in prayer because I always remember to pray. Come on. It's, I don't, I'm not mad that they're doing it. I just think it's kind of gauche, you know? Like it's, it's, it's gauche. It's gauche to be like, oh, these people don't do it, but watch me do it. Come on. They do it in every video and it's sincere. That's great, but that doesn't mean it's not gauche here. Gmail.com. Please be sure to include your pronouns, a brief bio about yourself and your work and links it to is. your it's sites gauche. and socials. If you work as- What's gauche? Gauche means like, uh, it looks, it's tacky. It's a, uh, it's tacky. It's, it's uh, rude. It's like a little icky. It's not that it's bad to do this. I, I obviously shout out people too, but whatever, whatever. I've made my point. You get it. Something like an artist, please be sure to include high quality samples to be showcased in the video. I will be able to reply to your emails due to the volume, but rest assured they are this guy is uh, a, a content creator by the name of Solari, S-A-L-A-R-I. It's down here below. They did a video about debate bros. We're reacting to it right now. Illegally, mind you. Now all being red. Anyway, I need to go see a guy about... Oh, shit, the cops! So, since these people are colloquially referred to as debate bros, we all... Okay, hold on a second. Wait a minute here. That, this seems like artistic license. Since these people are colloquially referred to as debate bros, no one refers to Hassan as a debate bro. No one, except for you, when it's convenient. Obviously, have to consider what gives them that moniker, their ability to debate. Now, I'm not an expert at debate. I can hold my own quite well, and I can't say whether I'm as good as or better than the debate bros. But I'm also not particularly interested I'd be in down their to react abilities to that, in this context. To be blunt, I think. Robin Summer with the ten dollars. Thank you very, very much. I feel like this debate bro hate is rooted in discomfort with edginess and conflating feeling uncomfortable with being harmed. They ignore that debate bro content reaches audience that they can't. Yeah, I mean, I think that he gave some credit at the beginning, but also edgy content predates debate bro streamers by a long shot. After all, the original dirtbag leftists was Chapo. They don't do debates ever. So, eh, but thank you for the $10. I do think that you're right on some degree. In general, they're not very good at it at least when it comes to speaking to other well-known figures. Against a member of the public, they can hold up well, but when it comes to someone with training, well, it's hit or miss. What I'm about to say might be an unpopular opinion and- What do you mean by training? Is that true? You are welcome to disagree with me or explain why I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm already this deep, so I may as well go all in. Online debates are a pointless- Okay, 
Wait, oh boy, here we go. All right, it's about to get wild, okay? It's about to get wild, all right? Now keep in mind, we're at 20 minutes, 28 minutes in, and I would, now he says he's this deep, but I strongly, strongly disagree with that characterization. So far, this has been an, a shockingly shallow analysis of debates. So, let's find out. To disagree with me or explain why I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm already this deep, so I may as well go all in. Online debates are a pointless waste of time and rarely benefits anyone but the debaters, regardless of whether they supposedly win or lose. Allow me to explain. Cool opinion. Cool, cool opinion, bro. A lot of people strongly disagree. A lot of people seem to get value out of debate. I love watching debates. I laugh. Debates make me think about things deeper. They make me, I mean, hell. In fact, I can give you specific examples. You want, watch this, ready? Ooh, ooh, let's add some depth to this. Mama, go deep, go deep, mama. Okay, I'm gonna go deep on you, ready? In fact, I can think of a debate by Vosh recently that made me rethink things. Vosh's debate on anti-theism, which I have a lot of critiques of with Ocean Keltoy, I was thinking about that, that debate for like a week. It made me rethink through a lot of things and it generated a lot of be beneficial discussions in this house, even though I actually don't think that Vosh handled that debate all that well. Even still, the debate itself was valuable. Hmm. So there you go. There's a personal anecdote from me. But the, uh, but the fact of the matter is you don't have to just ask me. Lots of people clearly disagree with you on this. That's a, quite a statement to make that there's no value in them whatsoever, but clearly a lot of people learn stuff from them. Yeah, the Peterson Zizek debate is another online debate, mostly viewed online, that a lot of people gain value from. I just think this is very silly and there's no evidence to back this up. So nice feelings. I'm glad you feel that way. When a debate is held online between, say, a figure from the left and a figure from the right, they already have their well-established audiences and they more than likely have some form of attachment to them, enough that they would go out of their way to watch them debate. As such, their respective audiences are already on their side and agree with them on almost every level. What people hope to see when watching their preferred debater is that they defeat and possibly embarrass their opponent, therefore affirming their beliefs and further raising the profile of the chosen participant. As a quick example, take for example this debate between Vosh and Sargon. Both of these guys have their audiences already on their side. Now if the intention of the debate is to win people over, realistically, how many people do you think changed their mind after watching it? Sure, there may be some. You don't know that because there's no polls done at the beginning or end. This is all speculation. This is pure speculation. We don't know the answer to that question. What about people who watch it in the coming years? What about people who go back and watch that debate and change their mind because of something they learn from that debate? This is just... I, this is just, this is just nothing. There's no meaningful evidence to this claim. I'll take a look at that meme in just a second or I'll share it. Yeah, this is just, I made it the fuck up. Some, and that's good, but probably not enough to matter. I'd argue that their platforms could be used for something more constructive, but in my opinion, these online debates are little more than theater. They exist to entertain their respective audiences. And my like I said earlier- that I made it the fuck up. I do have that one. There we go. Where did I put that one on the board? I have to redo my- My sources there that I go. made there it, it the fuck up. There we go. There we go. I have to redo my keybinds. 
When some of those people are willing to go well out of their way to defend a figure, even if they lose, there's a chance that they won't see it as such because they're so attached to them. Unlike something like- Wait, of course that's true, but that's always true. That's true about every act of, of, of trying, of persuasion. Persuasion has an incredibly high failure rate. People have uh, inertia. They have emotional inertia. That's not, that doesn't, that's any type of convincing anyone of anything. By this argument, video essays are just as useless. This is, again, not helping. This is not adding, this is not helping the argument against debate bros. Anybody can be rooted in their ideas. In fact, lots of people are. Overcoming that is what's important. A boxing match where usually there's a very clear winner, the victor of an online debate is rarely a certain, largely because after the fact, discourse among the audience can skew in such a way that people can turn the perceived loss into a win. What's really problematic though, is that having these debates can give a greater platform to people whose beliefs can be truly dangerous. It's given a- Keyword, can. Sneaky little wording there. Keyword is can. And also, anybody notice that shortly after the Hassan and Andrew Tate debate, a lot of people started looking into Andrew Tate and all of a sudden Andrew Tate got banned on every platform. Do you think maybe in this particular case, Hassan might have exposed him for the lying misogynist, at least in some part that he is? And also Andrew Tate is at least, I would say com comparable in popularity to Hassan, maybe more. Like, my my i know like my younger siblings tell me that they're that there's tons of tate fans in their school they've never told me there's tons of hassan fans i'm an opportunity to spread their vitriol further yes also as ya boy shimoy brings up isn't it weird that how after the sargon debate with vosh sargon swore off all debates that is interesting isn't it and possibly convince people that they're right so even though winning over a few people can be a net positive, it can also be a negative. You could argue that given the- Can. Just like anything. Everything in life is a risk. You can walk outside and get struck by lightning and immediately die. But will that happen? Hard to know. The platform to speak on is encouraging fairness in public discourse, but honestly, I find that hard to justify when someone might just be spreading hateful rhetoric. Mitigating damage is important, but all online debates really do is serve a spectacle. It turns discourse into a circus, and nothing really changes as a result. Look, I the real gigabrain take is that the real gigabrain take is that discourse already is a circus. Who could have imagined that in, this, in a society of the spectacle, all discourse is mediated by images, is mediated by spectacle. It's all a circus. The moment you log on, on the moment you log on to the internet, everything is a circus. That doesn't mean it doesn't have any value, but you just have to remember the internet is one giant circus with a million different things to watch. I do get it. You're upset at the state of the world, and I am too. As an individual, you probably feel powerless fighting a fight that feels impossible to win. Our politicians and the world at large is owned by powerful corporations that are incapable of failing which in turn are run by multi-billionaires who do not care about the lives of human beings. They don't care about fairness. They don't care what you think of them. And they don't care about the destruction of the planet, which is why so many of them are intent on colonizing other planets. So they- This feels like a giant waste of a point. So debate bros are bad because Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, two of the richest men on the entire planet, don't care about the opinions of debate bros hey newsflash they they fucking don't give a shit about your shitty essays either they don't give a shit about big news big news companies this is this is not an argument again a, not an argument against debate bros they can use up this one and become god emperor of mars
This frustration understandably might compel you to find people who have some influence, the ones who have a huge platform, a voice that carries across the world and words that not only echo your- Yeah, you mean like one of the giant YouTube video essayists out there? You mean the, the, the YouTube video essayists out there that tower above streamers in followers in social media impact? Hmm, that would be interesting if maybe people look to all kinds of media figures and that debate bro streamers are actually a pretty small and niche audience at the moment sentiment but your anger with their growing popularity it can feel as though you're finally being heard through them but which is also true about any media figure what do you what does this guy think tucker carlson and rush limbaugh did what D tucker carlson and rush limbaugh are both famous for raging for going on fucking tirades on their shows they're not live streamers. They're not debate bros. At the end of the day, you have to seriously consider who you want representing you and be realistic about how capable they are. James Mitchell with the $5. Thank you very, very much. Deeply appreciate your support. Remember that billionaires like the Koch brothers fund pseudo intellectual hacks to debate and spread right wing propaganda. And they are well invested. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, very curious. Almost like right-wingers benefit in an environment where nobody calls them on their shit. Hmm. Also, by the way, if you are here, this show is 100% viewer supported. So if you want to support me, if you're having fun, if you're having a good time, first of all, press the like button. It takes less than a second for you to press like and it always helps my stream. So if you can do nothing else, please press the like button. Also, consider subscribing and ringing the bell on YouTube. Also free, also takes less than a second, and it means you get to check out my entire library of awesome content. I've been streaming for a long time and I have a lot of cool stuff for you to watch. And then of course, if you wanna go the extra mile, consider coming to my website and subscribing to my website. It's only $5, you get a ton of free, uh, of a ton of really cool emojis you can use, and you get to know that you're supporting me. So we deeply appreciate that. Uh, right now, as of right now, we have 307 likes on a video that currently has almost 400 viewers. You know what? I can't even be mad, even though I do feel a little sad that I don't have 300, almost 400 likes, but I am excited there are almost 400 people watching this. That's very exciting. So thank you for being here, even if you don't press like. But please do press like. Anyway, let's get back to the content. Thank you. Killjoy says, do you think part of this weird video essayist versus debate community is less politics and more financially motivated? Notice how Dylan, Dylan ha Ha's counterpoints are missing from these vids. It's just clout shit. It's, it's less than that. It's not just clout shit. It's just that it's just... Tri it's just internet tribalism. Certain video essayists don't like debate content. They don't like the debate bros. They've picked some people that they've labeled debate bros, and they're trying to intellectualize the fact that they don't like this stuff. Instead of just being like, I think debate content is kind of fucking stupid personally. Instead of just doing that and moving on, they need to turn it into a moral, political, intellectual issue, even though it isn't. If it was an intellectual, political, or moral issue, you would actually have a case against these. But this video has no claims. It has no, sorry, no evidence to back up the claims. The claims are made very spuriously, and also, none of them are unique to debate bros. So, all of the claims made in this video are undermined by the video itself. It's just, I don't like debate bros, I feel badly about them, but I need to turn it into, into a, an intellectual exercise. Whatever. It's just vibes. This is just vibes. Uh, uh, ...winning over people to your cause. We're angry, but anger doesn't win when you have to convince someone. Have you ever had a heated debate with someone and found that they took some time to consider what you said afterwards? Or did they just double down on their beliefs and thought that you were being irrational? Personally, I don't want debate bros representing my ideology. I'm fortunate enough that I have a decent enough sized platform to have my- Damn. Well, I don't want you representing my ideology, so I guess we're at an impasse. Opinions be heard and validated, but for those of you who don't, 
The idea of someone spreading your beliefs in a far more effective way might be enticing, but you also have to be conscious of what they get out of it. Okay, so here we have yet again, it's a far more effective way of spreading beliefs, but it's bad because it doesn't spread beliefs. Which one is it? Are the debate bros super effective, but moral, but immoral in some way? Or are they super ineffective? He can't make up his mind. In this video, he claims both that debate bros are incompetent at converting people and also that they are super competent, but mysteriously, vaguely immoral in some way. And possibly what they gain from you, whether that's fame, validation, or capital. I am not suggesting that these people are just in it for the money, but it's undeniable that some of them have become incredibly wealthy from this brand of leftist discourse. Like this guy just had a like two and a half minute ad plug for Surfshark. Every single fucking leftist video essayist I watch has at some point done NordVPN, Surfshark, or even worse, fucking Raid Shadow Legends. How many of these people do fucking Raid Shadow Legends? Come on, man. This is so lazy. Ah, oh, this sucks. Literal multimillionaires. I'm also not suggesting that leftists aren't allowed to have money. It's a silly argument used by reactionaries as a way of obfuscating real issues. Kind of like when Bernie Sanders was- So you have made an argument that does that you don't even agree with? I'm not saying that they're making money and it doesn't matter if they were, but what if? That's not an argument, that's vibes. Judged for his wealth in his run for president. I will say though, and once again, this is my belief and you are more than welcome to disagree with me, I do believe that when people have wealth to spare, it should be used to help others. Sure, people like Hassan have donated towards mutual aid, but he's allegedly called it capitalistic, claiming that it was too individualistic and American. If I'm being brutally honest, it's kind of hard to believe a person's sentiment on wealth redistribution when they have a brand new Porsche parked in the driveway of their $2.7 million mansion. In fact, you know, I don't agree with this argument, but I'm gonna make it anyway. That's what this guy just did. He just did, I don't agree with this argument, but I'm gonna make it anyway. Am I psychic? Or am I just really good at this shit? You know what, I wanna tell you something. No, come, come closer, okay? Closer. Closer, closer. Nobody needs a mansion. Nobody Nobody needs three monitors, and yet you have three monitors in the background. You could make this video with a cheaper, with a cheaper microphone. Nobody needs two cameras, and yet you have a Logitech 920 on your, on your clip to the top of your monitor. Uh, and you also have, obviously, a DSLR that's sitting in front of you. Interesting, that. Soundproofing? You could have done that yourself. Did you know you can make soundproofing of high quality for $5? All you need is a bunch of old towels, a frame, and a bunch of time to hammer them together and actually put it together and then put it up on your wall. Sure, it's not as convenient. Nobody needs ugly thousand dollar shirts and nobody needs to flex that they have. But you have an ugly uh, red blazer, so. Have money. Come on. Look, you may defend that as someone simply enjoying the money that they've earned. That's up to you. I'm sure that if my wallet was that fat, I'd be making the owners of vintage guitar stores very, very happy, but... Don't you think that that might undermine your argument just a tiny, tiny bit, my man? This guy, this is, this is, oh my god. What is it about the debate bro topic that makes video essays so bad? Are all of this guy's videos this poorly constructed? At the very least, please consider what else he could have done with all that money that he chooses to blow on luxury commodities. Thank you very much, James Mitchell, for the $5 don donation. Hassan the Millionaire should move to South Central to make me happy. True, he should. It's champagne socialism, pure and simple. 
it reinforces the idea of class, and if you're in favor of taxing the rich, you shouldn't be okay with it. Even Hassan agrees with me, see? I want to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the video. Critique of something you enjoy is not a personal attack. You might feel the need to leave a comment pointing out all of their accomplishments and justify their questionable words and actions or even say something about how I'm jealous or yeah. ask what I've done that's so great. For that last bit, are jealous and what have you done that's so great? Though, I will say, don't. This isn't a competition and you're only reinforcing what I've said. You're My man, you just spent the last 10 minutes of this video talking about an argument you don't agree with to flex how you're better off, but how you're better than Hassan and Vosh because you have less money. You don't really get to pull this smug, if you criticize me, you're falling into my trap thing. See, there's this cool thing that we can do called giga chatting. I don't care for your weak, uh, your weak, fake, vague, gesturing traps. They don't weaken me. They don't slow me down at all. I can see through your tricks, my friend. Da, 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 da. That thing, you know, the Giga Chat. You're being protective of a brand and you're not helping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't critique me on my video, critiquing a bunch of other people. Helping. You're more than welcome to criticize me, by all means, but be productive. Don't fall back on that stupid argument. If you do feel angry or upset after all this, I want you to seriously ask yourself why that is, despite the fact that I haven't criticized you personally throughout the 6,000 word length of this video. Why do you believe that Bosch, Hassan, or anyone else that you're a fan of doesn't deserve criticism? They do deserve criticism. You want to know why I'm so triggered and offended? You want to know why I'm triggered and offended? Because I hate it when people lie. And I hate it when people make bad arguments. Bad arguments piss me off. Liars piss me off. I hate it. Ooh, I can't stand a liar. Oh, I can't stand a bad argument. That's why I get triggered. That's why I'm a triggered snowflake. I hate shitty smug, condescending bullshit. All of these people deserve good criticism. They deserve criticism from me because I give good ass criticism, structured criticism, not this fucking embarrassing garbage. If you feel this way, then I can only suggest that maybe it's worth creating some distance between you and the influencer to assess how and Maybe it's worth you getting some distance between you and the content creators. The lack of stunning, the stunning lack of self-awareness in making a video in which you claim that Hassan is a debate bro and you go over Hassan over and over again claiming he's a debate bro. Maybe you're the one who's a little attached, my friend. Why you form this attachment and consider why it's potentially unhealthy. The fact is, this movement now has figureheads and oh also the by the way i'm just gonna come out and say it that this type of video making the type of video making where you go huh, perhaps you should do some introspection instead perhaps you should sit down and think about things hmm? maybe you would have thought of that if you were a wise person like me maybe if you were a video essayist instead of a slavering debate bro fan you would have thought about things is the smuggest, most obnoxious way to deliver anything ever, and it's infinitely more condescending than what debate bros do. I'm sorry, it really is. Like, like, again, I left the debate community because fucking that shit fucking drive me crazy. But this shit is way, way more smug and way more condescending. I'm sorry, it really is. Tension market, along with algorithms, decides who gets to represent us. Our ideas are commodities repackaged in various forms and sold to the public in a way that's hopefully digestible and simple enough to internalize. I don't like that, if I'm honest. I'd rather class consciousness occur in a more holistic fashion, but none of us really have that choice. I also don't like knowing that I've contributed to this. It feels 
Uh, Somniostatic, I am currently 0% high, and this guy's argument makes no sense. So don't feel bad. You're not too high. I am 0% high, and this guy's argument is shit. Cran3, have some cash, mama. Who is this nerd? This is a nerd by the name of Solari. Uh, I, uh, I have given this essay a very fair shake. Illegally, mind you. Yar! Mama on the high seas, stealing content and and violating the copyright, which leftists love. Historically, leftists love copyright. Yar! But not me. I be a pirate. Thank you very much for the 10 euro. Deeply appreciate that. Also, Robin Summer, I really feel kind of emotionally abused by people like this, Rob, says Robin Summer. Don't feel emotionally abused, but a lot of this shit, a lot of these tactics that video essayists use are indeed very manipulative. But they don't, they say it's not manipulative because it's not a, a, a streamer doing it. Oh, no, no, no. Even when, when I use deceptive editing to misrepresent what someone said, that's not manipulative. That's not dishonest. I'm being very honest because it's in a video essay. And as we know, essays are, are the best way to get truth, but they're also not the best way to get truth. Debate, debate streamers are simultaneously the most effective way to convert people and don't convert anyone at all. I am a video essayist. It feels oddly exploitative of you. Like, I'm just saying what people want to hear because the audience gets comfort hearing this stuff from a person with a platform. Educating people is good, but I always thought that given the rot that's spreading in the world, the abuse of workers, the cost of existence, the death of home ownership, and the loss of precious time that we'll never get back, most people would have figured out the loss of precious time will never get back. This video was 42 minutes long. That things aren't right without someone on the internet explaining why that is. It's just hard to keep the faith when we have to rely on people like debate bros or to a lesser extent, rely on me. I'm not gonna tell you to stop watching these people. You do whatever floats your boat. There's work to be done and not enough coffee in the world to keep people chugging for 24 hours a day. So do what you can. If you want to convince a friend that every time that they clock in at work, they're agreeing to nine hours of exploitation and that by going the extra mile like the manager insists, then they're just making it worse. If you want to convince them that they'll never be rich and the reason why they're constantly unhappy is because the stuff they buy to dull the crippling feeling of alienation simply isn't enough. Sit down with them and talk to them. Let them know you feel the same and why. Don't just send them a link to a stream or a video and let that do all the explaining. Try to connect with other people. Stream or a video. Well, at least, at least, at least finally he's recognizing that this doesn't just apply to debate streamers, but also to the garbage video he's also just produced. People, let them know that they're not the only one that thinks that this is all messed up. Let them know that there are people out there who want to take action and they're welcome to join. You do have a voice. Okay, I'm sorry, but the irony, the irony of doing this, like, this long, self-aggrandizing, showboating, showmanship over videos of people actually doing the thing, it doesn't sell your point very well. You just sound like you're a loser as well. Like, is that the conclusion? Is that you're a loser alongside debate bros? Because... You're showing people actually doing things and you're just grandstanding over it. Combine them and don't let other people speak for you because- Celery person says, I wonder how many stream viewers he's actually talked to before making all these bullshit assumptions. Uh, zero is my guess. One day, you really might not like what they have to say on your behalf. Oh, and um, one last thing before we go. I know this is a bit different, but um, if you happen to be Bosch, Hassan, Xander Hall, or anyone else like you, uh, first of all, hi, big fan. Uh, secondly, if by some miracle you end up showing this on your stream and you didn't ask me if you could air it in advance, 
then I should let you know now I don't consent to it. If you did ask, I'll be sure to say so in the pinned comment. If you didn't know, uh, people will know. In which case, uh, tisk tisk. Bye bye. My, st I'm literally cringing. Like my, my stomach is clenching from how cringe that was. Oh my god, what is, what is it about essay perverts that make things feel so fucking dirty? Like this is so, it's so cucked. It's the biggest fucking cuck energy I've ever seen. And I'm not going easy, loader box. This is embarrassing. Also really kind of cheapens the uh, the whole consent discourse. If you're talking, if you're trying to do a, a consent gotcha, making light of consent at the end of your video that you published on YouTube that has a three minute Surfshark ad in it, an ad for your Patreon. God. Everybody knows, you know, if you do this, you're violating consent. It's it's you, it's it's tube rape. Uh, here's the funny thing. When it's shit like this, I want you I want you all to understand this like type of cucked behavior convinces literally no one. Also, if you decide to DMCA me, I truly hope you do because I will appeal it and I will respond. And if you don't respond to it, then I guess we can escalate it. So go ahead, DMCA me. We'll see who wins. Okay, we'll see. You really want to do that? I don't think you're gonna win. I, I just, I just, I'm just gonna say. I, I think, uh, I think my pause, Andrea, might, might be the, uh, might be the main thing that makes this valuable. I talked more than you did. Um. Wow. Is this, this is like, this video is like, holy shit. Not only is it incredibly unfunny, I don't think this guy was able to crack a single joke, but secondly, the ending is the, probably the most cucked thing I've seen since DJ Mule's video. Oh my dear God. Did he play any clips besides the Vosh one? No, he did not. Essay pervert might be the only, might be the first kink that I feel okay in shaming. Holy shit. It's just, oh my, can we just like, can we watch this again just for the cringe value? Listen, I'm a purveyor of fine cringe. And this one right on here, this is so good. Oh, come on, let's listen to it again. Hi, big fan. Uh, secondly, if by some miracle you end up showing this on your stream and you didn't ask me if you could air it in advance, then I should let you know now I don't consent to it. If you did ask, I'll be sure to say so in the pinned comment. If you didn't know, uh, people will know. In which case, uh, tis tisk. Bye bye. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff. It is very, very useful. Also, if you would like to support the channel further, you can do so at patreon.com. So here we have the last four minutes of this video is an ad for his Patreon. He had a three minute Surfshark promo in here. Fucking... You got me, man. I I guess I'm sorry. I'm sorry I violated your YouTube consent, my man. God, this is like, it's like, oh God, it's so embarrassing. These people walk around thinking they're smart. Well, needless to say, I am yet again not impressed by what the uh, essay perverts are bringing forward. Um, is it weak or weaker than Mule? Oh, it... it it, it's 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 the same level of argumentation as mule but significantly less um disgusting dj mule's video was genuinely atrocious like like ethically heinous uh dj mule is 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 a complete disgrace this guy i just strongly disagree with this video i think this video was very weak i think this video made no meaningful arguments 
it it made demonstrably false claims and also uh the smugness and condescension levels were off the chart and he doesn't have the excuse of being in a spirited debate like this guy was just condescending at his own audience and it's just uh yeah Also, Paul M., thank you very much. It's pretty cringe trying to attempt warding off criticism by hiding behind consent. I agree. Very cringe. I do think that was a, a very, very uh, embarrassing ploy at the end. Um, yeah. I, I don't have much else to talk to say about this. I mean, sucks. Really sucks. Should I submit myself to the... Um, do you think I should submit myself to the boost bus? Maybe I should submit myself to the boost bus. I'd like to see, I mean, I'm a, you know, being a former debate bro, maybe I could use the video essayist boost. Yes. Honestly, the real problem with Solari's debate bro video, this is it, this is the final, this is the final hot take of the, of the hour, the TLDR, which is the real offense was that this video was so fucking boring. Could you guys, can you imagine sitting through that without me adding some flavor to it? What I did for you is I took your, like, I took, like, your frozen dinner and I cooked it into a five-course meal. Talk about a debate, talk about, talk about streamers making the world go round. 